What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. So today we are going to be back on the 2019 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. We're going to be working on replacing the lower rear textured section of the bumper cover back here. This bumper cover does have some pretty good gouges in it. You can see that were left by the previous owner. So it's the last thing that doesn't look perfect on this car. So I want to get it replaced. So we got the new OEM bumper cover right over there. And we're going to show you guys how to go through the process of getting this bumper removed, getting all the trim, the sensors, the reflectors, and the upper painted sections of the fascia swapped over to the new one and get it back installed on the vehicle. So without further ado, let's start getting into the process of getting this thing removed and we'll show you guys the finished result at the end of the video. So guys, the first thing we're gonna do is remove both tail lights that are on the quarter panels here. They're held in by two T30 Torx screws. Once we get those out, that'll give us perfect access to the top of the painted section of the rear fascia. Next, we're going to remove these four bolts holding the rear fascia onto the rear body panel of the car. There's one here, one inside this little rubber insulator here for the lift gate. Then over here on this side, same place, one at the bottom, and another one in this insulator here. I believe these are also T30 size, the same as the ones for the uh, tail lights there. So we'll just pop right in here and get these removed as well. The next step is to remove these four 10 millimeter bolts securing the lower fascia to the rear body panel. Now moving into the lower portion of the driver's side quarter, we need to disconnect this wiring harness which feeds the rear parking sensors and the antenna for the keyless entry for the lift gate. To remove this connector, you're gonna slide back this yellow locking tab here and then this red portion pulls out. And as it pulls out, it disconnects the back side of the harness from the rest of the harness that goes up to the car. This might not come out easily on the first try as it does get some water in it and it gets some dirt kicked up from the wheel being right here. So it may take a little bit of effort to get this out, but as you can see, it will slide. And we should be able to get this connector pulled out after we pull on it a few times. This red lock needs to extend this much and once it does, and pull out this main half of the connector with all the dirt that gets packed up in it. We'll have to make sure to clean this out and make sure there's no dirt in there when we put it back together so we get a clean connection and ward off any issues in the future. Next we'll remove these two eight millimeter screws holding the rear cover into the rear fender liners. You can see there's one right here and one right up above it. 
So we're gonna remove those two on each side and that should give us access to getting this section of the bumper cover detached from the vehicle. Alrighty guys, so we got five 10 millimeter nuts removed from the fender liner here after removing the wheel. We also removed a push pin clip right here and we have to back off this threaded insert right here, just twist it to the left a bunch of times, unscrews like a regular screw. And then we proceeded to remove these two seven millimeter screws from the back of the rocker panel molding here that also attach this little splash guard that goes through the fender liner. So that all needs to be taken off. Now what we'll have to do is get up under here, remove this rivet that holds the back of the fender liner onto the lower portion of the rear bumper cover. Then we should be able to get this fender liner removed to get to the clips on the back of this wheel opening molding extension that go through the backside of the inner rear fascia. fender liner you can see in here the next step we're gonna have to do is remove all of these little white clips here should be four or five of them that hold this section of wheel opening molding onto the rear cover now we need to remove these because there is one screw that holds the bumper cover into the quarter that goes through this way and it's covered by the wheel opening molding right in this area so we're gonna go ahead and grab a pick tool and remove each one of these clips this wheel opening molding should pop right off more clips right here.
wheel opening molding section is removed that puts us one step closer to being able to get this bumper off next we're going to have to remove this little quarter panel section of wheel opening molding because the screw that holds the bumper cover on is actually behind this you can see it right there it goes through into a nut in the quarter so this wheel opening molding is just held on by four little white push clips here on the back side so we should be able to get in there with a pair of pliers trip each one of those off and get this wheel opening molding off with relative ease access to the T30 torque screw that's holding this quarter to the bumper cover. So we're gonna remove this and then that completes the process for this side. We're gonna repeat the same process that you guys just watched on the passenger side of the car. Now we'll be able to get this bumper cover off. One other quick thing that I should note before you guys go taking off this cover, you're gonna need to come under here and remove the clip that's holding the parking sensor harness to the rear body panel. So that's the clip right there, white in color, and it is going through the rear body panel, attaching this harness to it. So we can get up in here with a simple clip removal tool, and we can pop it right out of the rear body panel. We have everything removed surrounding the rear bumper cover we should be able to pop this off now it should just be held on by a retainer running up along the quarter under the taillights a separate retainer running along the bottom of the cargo area and then a similar retainer on the passenger side running under the taillight and along the quarter so we're going to attempt to get this popped off now There's the Jeep with the bumper cover removed. Everything looks real good back here. Nothing seems to be rusting or corroding, so that goes to show they did a pretty good job back here of sealing up this rear end. Very happy to see that. Now we got the old bumper cover removed right here. We got it on the stand. We're gonna start by removing all of the components that we need to swap over to the new bumper cover there. Those being the wiring harness for the parking sensors, the parking sensors themselves, all the trim that goes around the lower rear cover grill, the uh, neutral silver rings that go along here and along this side as well. Gonna get all that taken apart and get it sent over to the new bumper cover there. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect both of the blind spot radars that do not need to be removed from this upper section of the cover because we're not replacing this. We're reusing both of these painted portions. So we're going to be able to leave the blind spot radars in there. Don't have to take them out. All we're going to do is disconnect the wiring harness connector from them so we can remove the wiring harness and easily move it over to the new cover. Once we get that out of the way, I'll go ahead and I'll remove each sensor individually. And then we're going to get the wiring harness unclipped from the bumper cover itself. And then we'll go ahead and separate the painted sections, get those moved over. They're just held on by some little screws on each end. I think they're seven millimeters and get those popped out. Then we will go ahead and get the sections removed here. A couple clips holding them on to the lower textured portion that we're replacing. Get those taken off and then we will go ahead and remove the surrounds for the lower grill. They're all just held on by these little resistance clips all the way around so we'll have to get those popped off and get them snapped into the new bumper. I'm going to set you guys up on a time lapse as I do this and we'll get this knocked out, start building the new bumper cover. bumper is completely detrimmed. This is going to go back to Chrysler as a core. The worst part by far of taking this apart is getting these moldings off. They're very, very tightly clipped on, but if you do it right and take your time, you can get them off without breaking any of the clips. As you can see, I've done here, got them all off, no clips broken or damaged. When you're taking these off, remember that the round portions of this go on after this section here that goes in the center. So when you're taking this off, you're gonna have to take off the round portions first and then take off the straight piece. And when you're putting it back together, the straight piece is gonna have to go on first, followed by the round sections on the outer edges of the bumper. So now we're gonna put this old bumper cover aside, get the new one up here on the horse, get it unwrapped and start putting it together so we can get it reinstalled on the car. So now the bumper is all reassembled, wiring run, sections that are painted are clipped on and screwed into the new textured portion at the bottom. Got the wheel opening moldings put back on. We can reattach these now because we can get to the bolt that holds these to the quarters with the quarter section of the wheel opening molding removed. So we can snap this all on as one unit. We're going to do that right now, get this back on the car and start buttoning this project back up for the end.
So there we have it guys, the new bumper is snapped on. Now we're gonna go through the process of getting it properly fastened on there, get all the moldings, fender liners, and everything put back on, and then we should be finished with this and we can get it back out on the road. The bumper is all fitted up, fender liners are back in, wheels are back on. The last thing that we're going to do is reinstall the tail lights and install the few screws that go in the rear of the bumper cover here on the sides in the back of the cargo area. Going to get the tail lights plugged up like I mentioned, get them snapped back in, two T30 torques, and then this project will be done. That is going to be the end of today's video. As you saw, the bumper turned out absolutely amazing. It was a little bit difficult getting some of those trim pieces off, but we made it work and everything's looking great. Back to OEM spec with no gouges in the bumper from the previous owner. If you guys found this video helpful or interesting, or you know a friend that might, please feel free to share this video with that friend, like this video, drop a comment down below, and if you're feeling very, very gracious today, Please subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on any future videos to come. They might just help you with any projects that you're doing at home. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day.